Have you tried to find the Syndicat Bar in Rue Faubourg Saint-Denis? They don't make it easy. Our guest today explains what's going on behind all those posters and why it's not to miss on your next trip to Paris. I'm Susan Schwartz, your drinking companion, and this is Lush Life Podcast. Every week, we are inspired to live life one cocktail at a time. I think we need to toast to the father of Thibaut Massina, the creative director at the one and only Le Syndicat Bar in the 10th arrondissement in the City of Lights. Thanks to his introduction to wine's merits at an earlyish age, Thibaut has become the wine connoisseur he is today. He has brought all his know-how to his role at Le Syndicat, changing up what we think of as a wine cocktail. After this episode, you might be rethinking all you know about wine and cocktails, and I don't just mean vermouth. I'm super excited to have you on the show. It is such an amazing bar, and I can't wait to hear how it started, a little bit about you, and everything else, how you found yourself on that amazing street. So why don't we start with, where are you from? So my name is Thibaut Massina, and I'm from the Loire Valley, um, from Tours, which is like the historic part of France where all the kings used to live. So that's a region with uh, cheese and wine. So you can't make more French. And so I'm from that. Then I moved to Bordeaux to learn about wine and spirit. It was my study to honest, like wine and spirit uh, business and then i i worked in the wine industry for like four years and then i'm working in the syndicat for three years now i was not here at the beginning to be honest but now i'm like the oldest of the bar and that's really my type of bar and really my identity because uh, um, we work only with french spirits in the syndicat as you know and um, with wine as well which is like my specialty in the cocktail industry so why wine? Let's go back a little. Why did you decide that wine was going to be your future? So as a, a French young boy, I had my father, which we was informed of the wine. I mean, he was a really big passionate about uh, Bordeaux wines. So when I was a, ch- a child, he was making me try wines, you know. When I was maybe six years old, he was like, Thibaut, you have to try, you have to smell, you have to guess what you're smelling, you have to open your nose, your, your mouth, and then and so that's how it started and then I moved to London when I was 18 years old for one year my English is not so good even if I if I moved to London you know you know at such a young age you might have hated wine I mean did you like it or did you not even think about like or dislike I was like more focused on the on the nose to be honest because we were playing a game uh, the game with my, I have three sisters and we were playing that game, you know, we had to to guess what we were smelling. So it was really ludic, you know, really like, uh, really fun. And I think learning wine should all be be uh, fun when you're lear- learning wine. Because it's like ludic, you know, it's like when you are a child and you have to, to guess stuff. You know, we had that little uh, board game in France, it's really popular. You have to smell in it and smell what it is, you know. And then you have some points if you and you can win the game if you smell if you guess properly. So now, when you smell wines, can you tell what what they are, where they're from, everything? Yes, yes, yeah. That was my study, and I used to work for four years in the wine industry. I was a sommelier. I used to work in a wine shop as well, and I was my first job was wine guy in Bordeaux in Saint Emilion. You know, Saint Emilion is like one of the nicest city in France. Uh, I mean, like the, the town is so amazing. The vineyard is so amazing. And I was working there in a chateau and I was making tour, you know, like doing tour, uh, well, hosting people all from all around the world. And I was hosting them, explaining how we make Bordeaux wine, trying cheese and wine, chocolate and chocolate and wine uh, together. I mean, I'm a little experienced about wine, so now I can guess some stuff. Even if I'm more focused, I don't like to say, oh, right now I'm smelling a rose from Burgundy or I don't know, you know. I like to be more focused about what feeling I get when I'm smelling and drinking the wine. That's how I remember wine. Just the feeling that I can get when I I drink a wine. More about like, oh, this is chocolate, you know. Oh, that's super romantic. (laughs) Wine. Wine is romantic. (laughs) Well, French wine, right? Of course. (laughs) 
you asked how, how I, I got interested uh, in the wine industry. When I was uh, maybe 18 years old, I had a big, really big crush on, uh, on a girl and uh, her father was working in the wine industry. And I was like, okay, I had to be, I have to be in the wine industry to get sexy, you know? <laughs> so maybe I was the beginning of all. <laughs> I know some people say they have to be in a band. You know, some yeah. people say, you know, all these different things. You had to be in the You're wine right. industry. You're right. And I used to work for that guy, to be honest, <laughs> because uh, he, he taught me a lot of things that when I was a, a wine merchant, I don't know how you call that when you work in a wine shop, I, I was working with him. So he, he taught me a lot, of, a lot of stuff. You then went to London, you said, to learn some English. And what were you doing there? It was a crazy story. So I was uh, really bad at English when I was young, like the worst student ever. And everyone was making love of me, like, you know, because, you know, I was not speaking English at all. The French, they are really bad at English, but I was the worst. And so um, when I was 18, I just decided, like, OK, I don't speak English, so I'm going to move to England, to London, because, like, that's a challenge. You know, that's a big challenge. So I moved to London and I didn't speak English, so I couldn't find, like, a, a job in a bar or something like that. And I was quite handy when, with my hand with, uh, when I was... Uh, young so I just um, tried to look for a handyman job so I started as a handyman I was going like everywhere in London to fix stuff you know I don't know it could be like an IKEA, IKEA, IKEA uh, desk or fix a, a leak on the f on, a, on a roof could be like everything I was not so good at it to be honest because it was quite complicated to make electricity and stuff like that but it was a big challenge so um, Yes, I was like for four months on demand. It happened a lot of stuff to me and I started to, to, to learn English. And then I was gardener and babysitter for three kids that I always remember. They were like my brothers and I just spent one year in London. And now my English is, is all right. <laughs> it's fine. It's better than my French. But so did you try your, uh, your wine trick with the kids in England? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. And the parents, they were like really you modern. Did? So, yeah, yeah, I did, I did. Uh, it was, it was like a game, you know. I, I didn't make them try, but I make them like smell in the smell with the nose and try, start to guess. Uh, that was, to be honest, the the mother she hired me because uh, I had that uh, French approach of the food and the wine. She liked that I could uh, teach them, you know. That is so modern. I love that you found a family that wanted you to teach them wine. That's hysterical. It's, so It's more like the French food culture, you know, but the wine was a part of it. You're like the perfect babysitter ever. I love that. <laughs> now, I'll have to remember that if I ever need a babysitter, I've got to look for the ones that do wine and yeah. cheese, you know. <laughs> Maybe I'll get back to London and I could learn to learn to children. Exactly. You know, if things get bad, you can always be the babysitter who teaches wine and cheese. But yeah, so yeah. was the plan to always go back to Paris and work in wine again after your English got better? No. So the, the plan was to work in the wine tourism because I like tourism. I like meeting people. That's my stuff. You know, I'm really, even if my English is not so good, I'm always really comfortable to meet English people and I mean, people from all around the world. And I'd like to, to teach wine to people from a different part, you know. My plan was to study wine in Bordeaux and uh, start to, to make some wine tour in Bordeaux. That was the plan. The first one was Bordeaux. Then I moved to Paris because in Bordeaux, I don't know if you know, but the Bordeaux wine is quite like focused on themselves. I mean, they are like really like, not really open-minded about the other wines. So uh, I learned everything I had to know about Bordeaux wines. And then I was like, okay, I need to move in Paris, to Paris, because I need to learn more about like wine from the world and wine from different parts of France, except Bordeaux. So then if you are so focused on wine, how did you find yourself at a cocktail bar? That's the link. So um, I was walking in the street when I moved to Paris. I was walking in the same, same, same street as Le Syndicat, in a wine shop just in front of Le Syndicat. And one day, I just one day I just decided to to open the door of Le Syndicat. I started to see that, so I was like, okay, no, I know wines because I was working in the wine industry for three years. I know wines, so no, I want to with my father again. To be honest, with my father again, it was really late in the night, and we were drinking wine, and my father said, 
Thibaut, why, why don't we never mix wines together? You know, like why don't we never mix white wine and I don't and another white wine with different uh, typicity? And I was like, yeah, that's true. So then when I discovered the syndicat, I was like, okay, it could be fun to go to the syndicat and start to mix. I mean, that was the approach of it, to mix wines together. So that's my, my signature now. I'm always working wine in my cocktail. And in the syndicat, when I got here, we were only working with uh, classic wines. Now we have like more than five cocktails on the menu with, with wines. Before we get into Le Syndicat yeah. properly, isn't the idea of mixing wines, like even different white wines from different parts of the country, isn't that kind of sacrilegious, as if, as you say? Like, yeah, yeah, you're right. I've never you heard of right. anyone, you know, mixing wines. You mix, you know, different spirits. Yeah, yeah. Of course, that's, that's a big point. Yeah, isn't it kind of like mixing, you know, Bacardi rum and, you know, a different Appleton rum together and making something, you know? Has this ever been done before? No, so I don't think so. That's why I think that's my goal, you know, to make really realize that in the cocktail world, we have no boundaries. Uh, I mean, like for the spirits, if you want to mix tequila, rum, uh, cognac all together, no, no one even care, you know, but in the wine, as it's seen as a, as a high class, I don't know, product. Sacred. Um, yeah. So um, no one wants to, to mix them all together. So um, when I started to work uh, to Le Syndicat, uh, we had a challenge, a contest mm -hmm. all together. And I decided to mix. I, I, I was like, I had no money at this time. And I decided to buy like two bottles of like eight, eight, uh, 80 euros, <laughs> the bottle of wine and mix them together. And I told a story about that, you know, like why I want to to work wine in my cocktails and and, and I won the, the, the contest because it was good. The cocktail was really good because I used a really old uh, red wine and a really old uh, yellow wine, which is from uh, Jura. You know, yellow wine is like vin jaune. That's a wine from Jura, really, really nutty because it's really oxidized. It's aged like for... 10 years in barrels with the oxygen. So that makes some nutty flavor. So I mixed them together and it was really, really good. And that's, that's a big point. All right, right. So to go back a little, you knock on the door of the syndicate and you come in and you have a drink. Did you just start chatting to them and said, okay, you know, or, or was the contest already happening? I mean, how did you really get involved with the syndicate? So um, they were looking for someone. I, I gave my CV to the bar manager. I was a sommelier, but in a really small structure, a really small restaurant. So I didn't know what was a rush in the restoration world, you know. I didn't know what was like uh, to get really busy and uh, to look after everyone. And I just started, they believed in me. They, I think like the team kind of liked me and they said, okay, we want you in the team. And I started just to, uh, to be waiter for six months. So when I won the contest, I was not even behind the bar, you know. I was just like working as a waiter. And then, yeah, I touched my first shaker and I started to make bar. And I was not good at it at all at the beginning because it's really difficult. Bar is a really difficult thing. I mean, you have to talk with people. You have to make your cocktails be quick. Uh, so that's a really difficult part. And then that's how I started. I started. Now, for anyone who might not know Le Syndicat, can you describe what the bar is? Because it's really particular. So Le Syndicat is like in the Rue du Faubourg Saint-Denis, a street, which is like a really crowdy street with uh, all kind of people. I mean, it's a really big melting pot. You have like really, really different restaurants all um, along the street. And so we opened that bar seven years ago uh, with the idea to make Spirit Grand Spa, Gangsta, you know, I mean, uh, in the syndicat, we only listen to rap and hip hop music uh, and we work with Cognac, Calvados and only French spirits. So the idea was to, to take the old spirit of France because they, they were not trendy at all at this moment and to, to make them trendy, to make them like, you know, you could have a little French Manhattan in your hand and listening to rap music in the syndicat street. So that's the idea. Then when you come to the syndicat, you don't find the bar. 
because you have a lot of you have a, lo a lot of posters in front of the bar, so you don't see the bar. And when you open the door, you have that really like not luxury but modern bar with nice people and good cocktails. I've only been there in the summer, so the summer the tables spill out and you hear the music and you see all the people. But why don't you tell me about some of those French spirits that seven years ago weren't popular and that you've popularized? Can you give me an example of some of them? Of course. So when we opened the syndicat, the syndicat was opened by Romain Le Molique, who is like the owner of the syndicat group, and Sullivan Do. Sullivan Do is quite famous, like, because now is like a global ambassador for a cognac brand. And they decided to, um, to make like a French trip to find that spirits. So they moved to Calvados, to Cognac, and then they get back to Paris with all those spirits. And uh, so that's exactly, in my opinion, the same uh, vision that I have with the wine. I mean, you know, spirits used to be in France, the same scene as the wine, you know, like spirit of grandpa that you mix sometimes with water and that we call it like finalo, you know, uh, but you, you, you didn't work with them now uh, before. So now uh, with Le Syndicat, we were just like mixing Calvados and Sus together in a really fancy glass because uh, we used to work with fancy stuff. Um, you know, or we add even like this Eiffel Tower um, in the other way, you know, and it was a glass with the Eiffel Tower in that way, you know. I think that's the most famous picture of a cocktail from Le Syndicat is the one with the upside down Eiffel yeah, yeah. Tower. Yeah, you're right. So that's exactly the idea, how to make um, a modern thing with old stuff. And uh, that's why Le Syndicat got quite famous at the beginning, because we have so many spirits in France that's so rich. We have pretty much everything except some Greek liquor and tequila mezcal. But we have all the eau de vie, you know, we have whiskey, we have gin, we have pretty much everything. So the idea was just like to how you can unite them and make them big. I guess my question was specifically, what are some of the spirits that like two or three that we might not know as foreigners that you work with constantly that you know as a Frenchman? So you know Calvados, I guess, and Calvados is quite famous. But mm -hmm. we do have some eau de vie, for instance. Eau de vie. So eau de vie is basically a spirit. And we have a lot of eau de vie that is not quite famous. For instance, we work with Myrte eau de vie. Myrte. It's like a really little berry from the south of France, from uh, Corsica, yeah. Myrte. That's the spirit, the spirit that we use to make margarita. Because we have uh -huh. no tequila in the bar, no mezcal. So we have to find different options. And the Myrte eau de vie is quite like kind of saltiness. There is some, some kind of saltiness in it. So we use it in, uh, instead of uh, margarita, and that brings a different style of a margarita. But if you are doing a blind tasting, you could guess, you could think it's a margarita. So we have that kind of stuff. We have what else? We have a lot of liquor, for instance, fruit liquor as well. I mean, with uh, fruit in it. Uh, what else? Let me think a minute. Just how about things that you might use, you know, to replace some of the Italian amari? like a Campari and things like that. What is produced in France that's similar other than like Chartreuse or the famous ones? Yeah, so um, you have some Dolan bitter. Dolan, they are making like a, a kind of Campari as well. So Dolan is a really, really big uh, brand of the mix of mixology world. I mean, like this is the vermouth that we use, you know, the dry, the sweet, the, the sweet vermouth and the, the white. Uh, and they also make a kind of Bitter, a bitter, uh, Campari, kind of Campari bitter, which is more like on the strawberry side. Yeah, it's more like on the red fruit side. So that's what, what we use. And we, we also have a lot of, like, you know, Sus, for instance, or all the Jansian liquor. They are, like, uh, really important for us. We, we used to make a gin tonic, not a gin tonic, but gin tonic <sighs> with Jansian, which, which was, like, a, one of the iconic cocktails from the Syndicat. Uh, so it was... a uh, Jansian liqueur with um, tonic, and that's it. So yeah, we have a lot of uh, stuff like that. And also absent, absent, you know, absent. We we have crazy absent, like white absent, for instance, or stuff like that, which is like really, really good to use. Yeah, it's really fun that France is so big and there's so many different parts of it from the, the winter resorts that we think of, the Savoy Mont Blanc, to the island of Corsica. Was there anything that 
surprised you as a Frenchman knowing wines when you got there? You're like, wait, I've never heard of this. What is this? Um, good question. Because I was working in a wine shop and we were selling spirits. So I knew there is something yeah, in the fruit. You have, you know, to make amaretto sour. For instance, we have no amaretto because amaretto is Italian. So we have a prunel. How do you say that in English? Prunel? You know, it's like a little, little plume. A little plume. A and prune. they use the nut. The, yeah, they use this. Yeah, ah. they use the seed of the, of the plume. And they make, we say, a prunel liqueur, liqueur de prunel, uh, that is tasty, that has the same flavor as an amaretto. It's less sweet. Uh, so that's what we use in uh, the Amaretto. And I didn't know that, to be honest. What else? Uh, la, la, la. Uh, yeah, we have some really strange uh, liquor like sapin. How do you say it? Sapin. How do you say sapin, you know? Um, winter trees, you know? It's Christmas trees. Oh, like, yeah, 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 fur. <laughs> you know? We say fur. But the, the big one, yeah, fur. Fur liquor or stuff like that. And now, and now back to your wine. So how many wine cocktails are there on the menu? You, uh, you can find five different cocktails with wine in it. Then you have only two cocktails that you can say it's a wine cocktail. Because uh, the, the other one, they are just like a part of the recipe. And you have two, it's like they are the main ingredients in the recipe. And obviously, you guess that was mine. <laughs> they, were, they were mine. <laughs> can you describe them for me and tell me how you thought of them and made them? So we, I have one that I call the Lille wine. The Lil Wayne is based with wine, of course. And it was like, you know Lil Wayne, the rapper. So as we only listen to rap music, it was like a game with, you know, a world game. Uh, so um, I used Rancio Sec. The Rancio Sec is like an alternative of Fino, of Cherry. Uh, so Cherry is the same. Cherry is made from Spain, so you can't use them. And you have that little appellation from the south of France. This is really little, and it's like Rancio Sec, that's the name of the, of the appellation. And they age wines for six years in some damjan, in some barrels, and they let them like this. And then you are, you're going to have a really oxidized wine. Uh, so I use it. Then I use Pinot de Charente. Uh, Pinot de Charente, they, this is a mix between grape juice and cognac. And I use dry vermouth, Dolan, Dolan dry vermouth. And I infused it with a, a fig leaf. I infuse all of this with the fig leaf. So it's a kind of a twist of, um, of bamboo. You know, bamboo is fino and dry vermouth, but with French, French ingredients. And that is really tasty, really, really, really complex in the mouth with the fig leaf, which is really good with the oxidized, oxidized wine. The other one is the uh, Apollinaire, uh, which is based with a uh, Sauvignon Blanc from uh, Domaine Les Bornets which is like a domain in this, from my region, from, uh, the, from the Loire Valley. Uh, so we, do, we use Sauvignon Blanc, raspberry eau de vie, uh, raspberry spirit. Right now we use grapefruit and uh, verjuice. So that's a kind, and uh, egg white, so that's a foamy cocktail with white wine and grape juice. Grapefruit, sorry, that's, uh, that's really good. That sounds great. In fact, that may be our cocktail of the week because that sounds so amazing. And um, yes, I had it and it looks so pretty too. It's a great looking cocktail. Yes, you're right. And then I just g gave some advices uh, to the other bartenders because they were looking to work with, uh, looking for, for wines to put them in, to put in the cocktail. So I just gave some advices. I knew a lot of vineyard and chateau. So I was like, okay, so you can, in that cocktail, you can use these sweet wines, this sweet white wine from the south of France, which is not expensive and really good. Then we use a sweet red wine as well, Bagnols. They are like one of my, my favorite wines in the world. Uh, so yes, now we have like four different wines or five different wines on the, on the cocktail menu. I love that. You know, it's not, you know, when I was there, I wasn't even thinking about that. All I was thinking was, oh, the spirits, the spirits, because, you know, you go into a cocktail bar, you're, mm. you're not thinking wine. So you've totally, I can't wait to come back and try all of these wine ones. They sound so right. amazing. And uh, you have some, uh, I could make you try just the wine themselves, because they are like so amazing. The Rancio Sec, for instance, is like dry, nutty, and really, you know, when you, when you drink it, then it lasts really, really long in the mouth. And I like it so much. You know that everyone who listens to this is going to come in and say, wait, wait, Thibaut said that I could try every wine on the, 
on the menu, yeah, which yeah. is fine. Why not? Let's go. Yeah, yeah. If I'm if I'm here, I'll do it with pleasure. Using wine and cocktails to me, other than vermouth, seems you know completely novel. But is there anything else that Le Syndicat is doing that's new in the future? So um, yeah, when I uh, joined Le Syndicat, uh, you know, I was working in the bar and I was really frustrate, frustrated because. Um, my friends, they were not going into the bar, you know? They were just like, because the cocktail, sometimes it's quite expensive. And they were like, okay, it's, you know, you're going to a cocktail bar. It's a thing to go to a cocktail bar. So um, during the lockdown, we were thinking that we could make, as a lot of bars they did, we, we were thinking about like uh, making cocktail in can, you know? Uh, we could um, get the cocktail out of the bar. So we started to make our own hard seltzer, hard seltzer uh, uh, with the name of Fefe. Fefe means Fe en France. That means made in France. Um, the hard seltzer was like the beginning of a new project, the project of Fefe. So making can, uh, cocktail in can. Now we just launched like eight new recipes two weeks ago with kind of cognac seltzer, armagnac seltzer, and calvados seltzer. So they are like kind of hard seltzer, but with a, a decent spirit. I mean, cognac, calvados, and with a little bit of, for instance, cognac with uh, with rose, uh, cognac with uh, like uh, like uh, white pepper. So it's the same idea as a hard seltzer, but with uh, different ingredients to make it more flavoring, flavor. And then we made also four ready to drinks in a small can. So um, we um, used the iconic drink from the syndicat, for instance, Porn Star Martini, uh, Candy Negroni, Espresso Martini, and Apple Sour. And we put them in a can like this. I can take the can and give them to my friends, you know. That's a really big thing now in the syndicat because we just don't want to, to work cocktail in the bar because this is quite, like, closed, you know. But we want to give it to people around the, all around France, you know. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, that's another thing that I can't wait to try when I come back. Yeah, uh, we will give like all the all the cans to you. Uh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This has been really, really educational. I've, I've loved learning so much about the syndicate. I mean, I've read so much about it. And uh, this was a little bit that I just I had no idea. So I always end my podcast asking two questions. One is... Yeah. And and I think this is this is great for you. I usually ask for my top tip for the home bartender, and maybe you could focus that on someone who might want to try mixing a cocktail with wine. Could you maybe give a tip of maybe two different wines that they could try mixing or something like that? Of course, yeah, I could. I could, yeah, of course. So um, we used to work wine uh, in the cocktail industry for a long, long time. For instance, vermouth, there are wines with with uh, botanicals in them. So they are wines. The thing is, you have to, if you want to, to work with a wine, that, that has to be wine that is really like, that, that has a really big typicity. You know what I mean? Typicity, is that correct? Um, I mean, it has to be, it has to, to get something, you know, it has to, to, to be a wine that you can recognize if you close your eyes and you drink it. Because if okay. you use a random white wine, it's going to be okay, but you're not going to feel the vibe, you know. So I could give that advice. For instance, you have a really good winemaker that you really like. He's making a, a wine with a really, really long on the mouth, with really complex notes. So you have to think about that wine. And in my opinion, the wine cocktail, they are better if you eat with it. Okay. okay. So if you, if you do a food pairing a wine pairing. So if you are, if you make some food, for instance, where a night, you, you, I don't know, you cook uh, some sushis or I don't know, uh, and you have some wasabi in the sushi, uh, you could just take a white wine and think like, okay, I'm going to add some little, I don't know, oyster water, for instance, or something like that, you know? I used to do that when I was, um, I, I've been contacted by Time Out, to make a, a featuring with a Japanese chef and he was cooking for people and I was making wine cocktail. So um, the starter was oyster, for instance. So I just took the water from the oyster and I put them in the wine with a little of honey and uh, a white wine. And it was like such a good pairing. 
because it was a wine, but that I just changed a little bit to make it match with the, even more with the, with the, with the food. So just respect my, my, uh, my advice is like respect the wine, uh, think about the wine and just, you can modify it like just a little bit to make it works with what you're eating, to make it more complex or more like watery or more, you know? Oh my God. I love that. I can't I wait know. to have an oyster. I don't know if that was, I don't know if that was <laughs> clear, but because it's, it's still, you know, I'm still developing the idea. Um, Oh my God. I want to see that on the menu at the syndicate, an oyster plus your wine cocktail. Yeah. On the, on the, on the next menu. Yeah. The, the next time I go to an oyster bar, I'm going to be like, can I have a little honey? And can I have some of that oyster water with my white wine? They're going to think I'm crazy, but I'll say, ask Tebow. Yeah. He knows. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> no, I think, I think it's like, it's even, I'm really confident about that, about like the, the place of the wine in the mixology world for the future, you know? I think we have a lot of stuff to do yet because wine it's in I like something that you don't touch because it's uh it's really important it's really like I think we have we have a lot of things to do and with the new generation of of winemaker they are starting to understand that and if you respect the product I don't see any problem to work the wine uh you know now yeah yeah my, la <laughs> my last question is, um, if you could be drinking anything anywhere, where and what would that be? I think right now I got one of my best experience uh, of traveling. I have a really, a really good friend of mine uh, who is living in Martinique, you know, Caribbean island, Martinique. Mm -hmm. there, it, this course. is a... And and there they are all drink, they are drinking cocktail all day long. They are drinking you know tiponche, which is basically like just rum, lime, and sugar. But there is a really a really good way to do it. You have to know what you're doing. So you have to put the sugar, then the lime, and it has to be the zest, and then the rum, and you just mix it with the hand like that. And so that experience, you're eating fish, fresh fish. The people there, they are like so amazing. And so that experience was so good. So right now, I wish I could get back to Martinique, drink a tiponche all day long and uh, get fun with, uh, with Ike, my, uh, one of my best friends there. Oh, God, sounds divine. I've always wanted to try tiponche and that sounds perfect. So listen, thank you so much. I'm so excited to talk about wine and to meet you, yeah. and I can't wait to return to the Syndicat. Please, and it will be a pleasure to, uh, to host you and make you try all the wine from the, from the Syndicat and talk about it. Yes, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks so much to Thibaut for being on the program. I can't wait to head back to Paris to sample all the wines he promised me a sip of. But now it's time to start creating cocktails with wine, and our cocktail of the week is the perfect diving off point. And you don't need to be in France to make it. Our cocktail of the week is the Apollinaire. For those who might not know, Guillaume Apollinaire was one of the most famous French poets of the early 20th century. If the syndicate were around back then, then I am sure it would have been his local. I know he would have loved this cocktail. It's hard not to. Add all of these ingredients to a blender. 40 mils of freshly squeezed grapefruit juice. 25 mils of simple sugar syrup. That's one part sugar to one part water. 15 mils of eau de vie de framboise. That's raspberry in French. And here comes the wine. 30 mils of Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire Valley. And last but not least, 10 mils of egg white or aquafaba. Then add three big ice cubes to that blender. Then blend, blend, blend. Add ice cubes to a chilled lowball glass and fine strain everything into that glass. Then add grapefruit zest on top of the foam. Viva la France! You'll find this recipe, more cocktail recipes using wine, at least vermouth, and all the cocktails of the week at alushlifemanual.com, where you'll find most of the ingredients in our shop. When you listen to this, I will be in 
Philadelphia. It is my goal to try at least one new bar while I'm there. I will report back. So if you live for Lush Life, make sure you head out to the bars and restaurants you love and tell them how much you love them. The music for Lush Life is by Stephen Shapiro and used with permission. And Lush Life is always and will be forever produced by Evo Terra and Simpler Media Productions. Which leads me to say the wise words of Oscar Wilde, all things in moderation, including moderation. And always drink responsibly. Next week, we head to a distillery that was open during COVID in the heart of Louisiana and is doing great things with and for its community. Until that time, bottoms up.